What is the best way to sell a car in Australia in 2023? Welcome back to the channel everyone. This is Dimitri and Value Cars Australia and the topic is clear. I've just been selling my Haval H6. I'm sort of at the moment of recording video this video. I'm sort of at the final points of finalizing this process. Not quite done just yet. But uh, a lot of people buy cars, a lot of people sell cars. Selling cars is a process of its own. And one thing is you know in principle how it's done. Another thing is what is the better way of doing it. I've just been through it. I've been through it over the past couple of years several times, unfortunately for me, making kind of wrong choices. Um, and today I'm going to share all of that information with you. Your cup of tea? Do you think you will benefit from this? Well, keep that thumb ready to give me a like as soon as you thought that it's beneficial. At that point in time, your thumb goes up like this and you give me a like and subscribe for more. What are you waiting for? All right. Now we're selling cars either to dealers. So we are trading in or we're selling them privately. Yeah, that's the that's the big kind of um, division there at the top. It's an obvious fact, but I'm going to go into specifics in just a moment. Just be patient. OK, first of all, first of all, when you're buying a new car, if you're buying a new car and you are not trying to squeeze as much value out of the your old car as possible. For example, you've had your car for 10 plus years and you know for a fact that you'd be lucky to sell it to someone and you would be happy with virtually any money on it. In that circumstance, you are not going over this the hard way. You're simply going to a dealer, you're being nice to them, whatever. Well, it doesn't matter really because they will have to still assess the car realistically. They're not doing you any favors there. And you will trade it in for hopefully a little bit of the price there, a little bit of a good value there, depending obviously on what kind of vehicle it is and what kind of brand it is. That is a separate rabbit hole altogether. That is closely related to a recently published video where I was talking to you about depreciation of, say, Chinese vehicles versus some more established brands. These topics are closely related. If you had a car that is of Chinese origin and you had it for a while, chances are you will get less for it. But that's a separate rant. Yeah, let's not go there. Let's go about methods. Now, that is the easy way. The slightly harder way is that you try to advertise it privately. First thing that people do, they go to carsales.com.au. I'm not affiliated with any of these uh, websites, any of these channels, any of these methods. So please do not delude yourself thinking that I'm benefiting somehow trying to propose one over another. I'm simply sharing my opinion here. And if I have to give you a stupid asterisk at the top, I'm going to say to the least understanding of you lot that it is not financial advice. Do what's right for you. If you lose money in the resale, it's not my fault. It's yours. OK, and now carsales.com.au is considered to be at least in uh, Australia in 2023 as probably the go to place to sell the cars. It happens to be the most expensive place to sell the cars and the least efficient one, in my humble opinion, with one very particular use that I'm going to tell you about slightly further. I need to give you context first. So stick around. There is a use for them. They are expensive. To advertise, I'm not going to tell you exact price, like check the latest on their website, but they charge you. They charge you kind of handsomely in sort of low hundreds and you can pay more for that for to make your ad premium, to make it stand out, to make all of that kind of stuff. They charge you to advertise your car until it's sold. Benefit of it is that the time is not limited. You can sell it until the cows come home and the, the ad will be there. And also they have some facilities there uh, of um, basically immediately giving you a bit of extra tools that show you whether your price is competitive enough according to them. In my opinion, they have always given me a bit of a low price and privately, especially before, I sold way higher than what they are predicting there on the website, on the interface. But keep that in mind that there is a bit of a price guide. They give you a bit of a price guide. That's beneficial. That's beneficial when you engage with car sales. Another beneficial thing with car sales is the fact that they are almost immediately pinging you with an immediate offer. Like they say, immediate car uh, bar purchase offer for you. In that case, uh, it may be a separate conversation because it's a lot to say there. It is not carsales.com.au that would buy your car off you, but they would connect you with some dealership that they kind of negotiated on your behalf with, which is basically a contract that they have. No one has negotiated on anything. They just submit their details and get a little bit of a money back by generating a lead for the dealership. 
but they will connect you with a dealership that has a legit interest in buying your car off you. So basically they will generate a lead for a trade-in, even if you don't want a new car. That's a good thing, isn't it? That's a good thing. So that's car sales, let's park that for now. Um, another uh, thing is gumtree.com.au. Gumtree used to be a free ads classified website for a long time. I sell a lot of old furniture there, you know, old car electronics, lots of things that I don't need. Everyone knows Gumtree, everyone has used Gumtree. Gumtree is now owned by eBay, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe not, but one way or another, they used to be also uh, autotrader.com.au website that in the good old days, maybe five years ago or so, don't quote me on that, I would have told you to go there as well and sell it on, like, advertise your car for as cheaply slash free as possible on as many places as possible. That is a logical, da kind of suggestion. But in this case, I'm telling you, if you really are desperate to sell your car, yes, you will consider going to car sales and you will also go to, go to Gumtree because Gumtree now, or eBay behind Gumtree, I don't know, owns Auto Trader as well. And if I'm not mis mistaken, carsguide.com.au as well. So basically advertising on Gumtree will automatically put your car into the search engines of those two other websites, at least in 2023 in October, okay? Maybe this has changed by the time you're watching this. So that's two first things that you're doing. Third thing that is less obvious is Facebook Marketplace. Facebook, Facebook Marketplace is wonderful if you sell lots of crap, like lots of different crap. There are lots of people, you will get a lot of lead-ins like baby gates and like, I don't know, old phones and that kind of stuff. But cars, you can sell there too. Problem is every troll, every unchecked weirdo, every unchecked uh, person pretending to be from India, um, is gonna troll you if they don't like you, like a lot of people don't like me for an unknown reason, just because they want me to buy Mahindra or some crap like that. I, I don't know, I don't wanna speculate. But basically, I've been trolled there, I dealt with that as best as I could, and I ignored it to the rest of rest of my ability, right? But especially if you have an online presence like me, my experience will vary from yours. If you are a no one in a good sense of the word, I'm not saying it to offend you, I'm saying it to tell you, hey, you don't have my problems. Um, then you will not have that problem. But basically, Facebook Marketplace is also a place to sell a car. Now, as soon as you advertise your car privately, I would give it a relatively short period of time, maybe a couple of weeks, to see, maximum, to see the amount of organic, legit uh, interest in your car. Yeah, uh, That is from people who look like they're not just resellers and I will say Indian resellers and I'll say it simply because I have a fact of life that is proof that every single low undercutting weird offer weird requests that never go to anything people promising to come and never coming to my address and stuff like this they all happen to have Indian names so I haven't asked for their birth certificates to check if they're Indian so it is literally just me presenting information as it comes to me not passing any particular judgment or whatnot, in case I need to give another asterisk to particularly impressionable ones of you. So I have lots of Indian trolls immediately, and I think that this bit will probably hit you too, because those people, uh, they are probably real people who are simply um, undercutters, they are resellers. They're not real buyers. They simply look for a car that's in good condition, and for desperate people to buy cheaply off, and then they do whatever they do with that car, resell, obviously, right? They are rather easy to detect because they don't know how to talk like human beings. They don't know. They, they talk really badly. They communicate with you with one or two word phrases like price negotiable. If they don't ask you anything about like condition of the car, uh, how much warranty is remaining, oh, have you driven it off road, oh, like why are you selling, like that kind of stuff. You know, they're probably not real. Um, you will deal with that BS for about two weeks, if you are a patient man or, or a lady. After those two weeks, you will know if you have any real leads, and I recommend you to like very quickly qualify this and move on in case, like not just linger there and sit there hoping for the better. Um, and if no organic leads are coming, but you still want to sell higher and you can wait, I would possibly invest $13 or something like that into, um, into a promotional campaign on Facebook Marketplace that is going to 
push the ad into more browsers, basically, in front of more eyeballs, essentially. I've done that in the past for this car. Didn't do any good for me, it was wasted money, but I only wasted like 20 bucks or something like that. But you could try that. That's also a method of boosting your sale, yeah? You could do the same with Gumtree, you could do the same with car sales, except car sales, it becomes exorbitant and still not guarantee a sale to you. Uh, but in uh, in um, Gumtree specifically, they have lots of that bump up an ad or make the ad more prominent, but they are for a specific number of days, like sort of like they're running a, this promotional campaign for like seven days or something and your ad stays at the top or something like that. You could try that. It's up to you. It depends on how much you value you put into this. Through that process, you hopefully will get some real people. If you don't, if you don't, at that point in time, two weeks in, three weeks in of you selling the car, similar to what happened to me, you will get a ping from carsales.com.au where if and where you advertised, they have the details on your car. And based on those details, they will say to you, uh, here is an instant offer again. Would you like to take it? I would seriously consider that in the current market conditions that are not COVID times, people don't want cars, everything slowed down, it's October 2023, I would, con I would suggest that you consider it. I would suggest that you consider it. So I am recording this video not having sold the car, but having had one trade-in assessment of the car, and they have given me their value, which was a bit lower, quite a bit lower than what I want, but it's still better than nothing. And then I am yet to talk to a car sales lead, you know, another trade-in place, which if it goes particularly well and if it's worth, in my opinion, to add anything to this video, I'm going to post an additional video that will talk to you more about that process, if you would like me to. Now, I say it to my audience every time, I do not have a crystal ball, otherwise I'd be filthy rich. That means that talk to me in the comments down below. Talk to me in the comments down below if a particular thing interests you. And I will spend more time talking to you about it because I don't want to talk about topics that don't resonate with my audience. That's how I make my content more, content more relevant and talk about what I'm passionate about or what I currently am going through. This is a private club, as I keep saying to you. It's not just a professional car review channel. Yeah. But at the same time, I'd like to answer questions and I'd like to make it as relevant and interesting for you as possible. And obviously people who talk, they are the ones who get rewarded. People who don't talk, they just get what gets served, right? So if you're one of those silent people who's sitting there waiting for whatever and you either like it or not, well, God bless. But if you would like to let me know if you're interested in a particular topic or specific element of what I'm talking to you about right now, selling the car in Australia, talk to me. I hope this was helpful for at least you know, something. I hope it's worth something for you. If it is, give me a like as always. Subscribe for more if you just randomly clicked on this video and you like my kind of way of expressing myself. I have lots of videos about cars and essential car electronics such as wireless car play adapters and dash cams. And I'll talk to you next week about something else possibly related to selling of this car, possibly to something else car related. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next time.